from Secure Ideas on uh, Waka Mobile. So, so uh, Waka Mobile. Uh, please give them a warm welcome. We'll finish as quickly as possible. So, That's what she said. <laughs> Every time. No, she didn't say it. She just experienced it. <laughs> so, wow, well, it's gone downhill already. We haven't even gotten past the time. Wow, well, that was five seconds, wasn't it? That's a record. You're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. So we're going to be talking about whack a mobile whack mobile is a project that uh, Tony's actually the project lead on. Uh, I'm his boss, so I got to stand on stage. I think that works out, right? You know, you can sign them work, and then do they submit something, say, that's my name, that's my name, I need to be famous. So, whack a mobile is uh, where we're announcing it. We will not be releasing the project for two days. Our last milestone, as we'll talk about later on in the class, in the presentation class, geez, the presentation is January 31st. Shmukan just, they weren't willing to move the con to uh, fit our release schedule. So as soon as that milestone is finished, we'll, like I said, we'll talk about that later, we'll actually be releasing uh, the MobaSec distribution, which I'm really excited about. Of course, I'm biased. So I guess we should get started with figuring out who the heck we are. Let's go. Uh, so I'm the old guy of the company. As you can see, this is a picture of me and my first cell phone uh, just a couple years ago. Um, been around for a little while. Um, he still hired me. You know, having pictures of his secret root dance will get you a job. And that's what I call responsible disclosure. <laughs> anyway, um, I am uh, one of the co-authors of uh, SANS 571 class that we did just recently with also with uh, Chris Cuevas. Um, I'm the project lead of the Mobisec Live Environment Project, as he already said, and uh, co-chair of a SANS Mobile Summit that's coming up in March in Nashville. I'm Kevin Johnson, I'm a nerd. I'm an open source bigot. You will not hear the words, wow, Microsoft is so cool from me. Um, you will, though, say that Adobe is absolutely the best uh, company around for penetration testers. Please welcome <laughs> Flash Player, and if you can install SharePoint at the same time, this would be wonderful. We would love you. I've always found that when people say to me, hey, come do a pen test, I say, what, you know, what are you running? Oh, we're running SharePoint. Great, I'll just write a report. So, <laughs> we knew that actually happened. <laughs> the client didn't think it was funny. <laughs> we did. Come on. You come to the pen testers and don't expect us to screw around with you, right? It's awful. So, what are we going to talk about? So, tonight, today, whatever, you know. Uh, long weekend already. So we're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to talk about mobile security testing. We're going to talk about the different things out there, the projects, the tools, all that crap. We're also going to talk a little bit about the DARPA CFT because this project was a CFT project. DARPA for the win. Uh, we're going to talk about OWASP. And, but I do want to make it very, very clear that we will not be talking about PowerShell today. Power sale. Power sale. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Chris. By the way, just for help, yesterday during Chris's talk where he kept telling people to buy a damn book, and then when he was asked what damn book should he buy, he didn't know. Uh, Coding for Pen Testers is the book to buy for this. So you didn't know that was going to be there, did you? <laughs> so, your turn. Oh, my turn. Here we go. All right, so we're going to talk about mobile security. Um, do I have to say the word? You may not. Shimer shimerity. Anyway, um, so why is it so important? Well, one of the biggest reasons is, as you see this graph, this was a projection back in 2007 of when we're going to have more mobile devices with wireless plans than actual people. Uh, guess what? It already happened in 2011. There was like 327 million devices with plans, 315 million people. So I think half of those he owns. Um, but basically, they're, they're everywhere, right? Mobile devices are crazy. Um, we have lots and lots of uses for them. They started out as, let me make a phone call, and now we've got Angry Birds, we've got Flashlight. What the fuck is it with people and Flashlight apps? I just don't understand it. It's my favorite app. It's like, hey, I've got a phone, I've lost crap under the table. That's always it, right? Dinner, oh, let's flash it around down there. And, but people will 
won't pay for it. I went out on Amazon, their app store. They got a flashlight app for like four bucks. <laughs> it comes with strobe lights though, so I guess that makes it okay. Boom, pff, boom, pff, boom, pff. So, oh, no. <laughs> as we as we grow the capabilities of our phones, as we grow, <laughs> thanks, I appreciate it, man. You got this grow. Uh, as we start, as we start getting more and more business critical functionality, right? Blew my mind uh, about a month or two months ago when I saw an announcement for a Siemens application. And just so you know, we're not beating up on Siemens; they uh, they get beat up on enough. Um, to allow you, well, they're not Adobe, but uh, crack smokers. But Siemens actually has an app for your iPhone to connect to medical imaging servers, where if you get like a MRI, the doctor can sit on his iPhone at the airport and look at your insides. What could go wrong? Yeah, nothing. Nothing at all. But there's all this stuff is coming out. All of these uses. What? <laughs> you guys are all going to opt out today when you fly home, right? Yeah, opt out, opt out. TSA. Can we get their badges taken away, please? But all of this stuff is out there, right? More and more and more apps are coming out. And we started out with funny things like Angry Birds. Got to do Angry Birds. I've been waiting for World of Warcraft on my phone. Now that I can really feed the addiction. Um, <laughs> Then we moved into let's let's read our Word documents and our PDFs and everything else like that, drink our fake beer. Um, and now we're actually seeing things like SAP and PeopleSoft and Siemens and, and all of these major critical applications running on these things. So Steve-O helped us here. He always wow. made sure that going to the cloud, everything is there. So our devices, they're always on, they're always connected, they're always with us. I mean, we've got everything on these devices. I mean, people put their account numbers, they put their passwords on it, they put their grandma's favorite recipe on it, everything, their entire life is there. Why? Well, so it's always accessible. I can always whip it out and say, hey, check out this really cool recipe, right? Man, just on stage, just moved on and said I can whip it out. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wow. commented, that's just yes. <laughs> nobody commented. Where do I call HR? You are my boss, right? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> But it's, we send it to the cloud, and thanks for Steve, it's there. Mobile testing is crazy, right? How do you do it? People start building all of these, well, I need to test this, just the people who have thought about it, because the sad part is most organizations haven't even considered security testing, right? They just, hey, here's a phone, install some apps, have a clock blast. And they don't think about what type of information is out there. Let's talk about Facebook, right? Uh, not that Facebook's a business critical app for most people, but you know, we'll, we'll log in over HTTPS, but uh, the rest of the session going over HTTP must be okay because it's a carrier. Nobody could ever intercept carrier traffic in Chris Padgett. But um, the apps themselves are just doing stupid crap. And nobody knows how to test it. And then you get a few people who start thinking, wow, we need to test this, we need to figure this out, we need to assess this. And what do they do? Well, they have to go figure out what are the right tools to do this? And I talk to people all the time when I teach classes, when I wander around aimlessly and people talk to me. Um, well, hey, what should I run? Well, there's lots of cool tools. Well, how do I install that? Well, you know, Chris John Riley's got a great blog post about this thing. Yeah, I was going to ask you to talk. You know, Robin Wood's got other things. He's like, yeah, you guys sit in the front row, you get picked on. But they've got tools and blogs, and other people have tools and blogs, and you got to go out there and find all of the instructions. And look, I'm not the smartest person in the world. Actually, most days I'm pretty dumb. Ask my wife. Um, she'll tell you. And I go out there and try to figure out how to run these tools and install them, and it takes time. And then this tool doesn't work because you install the libraries to support that other tool. And you spend more time building the testing environment that you need than you spend testing the apps. And since in most organizations you're already fighting with your boss for the resources to do that testing, it takes you a week to set up your environment, which in a lot of cases is a short period of time to get all this stuff running, right? You've lost a week out of the time they gave you. And let's try to get started about where the hell do you figure out which of the tools should you be using. I mean, I go out there, we're building this, I'm talking to other people, and somebody will say, hey, did you hear about, and they'll list the tool thing. No, what in the world is that? 
You didn't hear about that? Oh my gosh, this one blog in uh, you know, Uzbekistan or something posted it, and you didn't catch it? No. So what we have to do is figure out what this is. And then we see, I, I found a lot of times, especially when I type test, it's always fun to find it, where people have built their own tool. Well, we'll assess apps this way, and they build these complex applications for some reason I found most of them are web-based. People seem to be obsessed with HTTP. I know I am, right? But they roll their own. The security concerns and everything else coming from that are in place, right? So you can always use your tools that you already have. I mean, what's wrong with that, Kevin? I mean, come on. I mean, I've got some good tools. Why can't I just use those? I mean, I've got Burp. I got Beef. I mean, is there anything else that I need? No, not at all. I mean, so there's so many of them out there, but there's still a need for mobile-specific tools. This is what we're trying to get started here. Is kind of like a call to arms. We need everybody to start looking at developing those tools. If you already got them, let's get them out there. Let's get them to everybody can see what they are. They need to be. Well, open source would be nice, all right? And they need to, well, I don't know, actually work. That would always be nice. But, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Go ahead. So what we did is I, was we came up with the idea for MobiSec. It's a live environment, right? Uh, yes, we will acknowledge the fact that the logo we had somebody build does look like a Pokemon ball. We're trying to think of the catch line, you know, got to catch them all, mobile devices. Um, and it's a, the idea is let's take a Linux environment, because, well, how many people are not familiar with Linux? We use Ubuntu. Uh, it's easy. We did not make the same mistake I made with Samurai. Uh, we are using the LTS version. As anybody who has Samurai 099 running right now knows, right, it's a pain in the ass to upgrade because Kevin was stupid. Uh, Tony and Chris were not. They went with the LTS version. Now, the idea here is very similar to what we do as a, as a community with Samurai, WTF, and Backtrack. Right? Let's build an environment that has everything we need pre-installed, pre-configured. Right? You can boot it up, done. There's the stuff. Now, this is an open source project. We'll talk in a second about some of the constraints that places on us and the problems we have with some of the tools in the mobile environment. Um, but the idea, and what we want to really get across is, this is us starting something. Right? We can't finish it by ourselves. We're going to release this. We want to try to build a community around it. Have to bring suggestions. Come on, commit stuff, right? Um, and that, that is Mobisec. So what's in it for you? I mean, why would you want to use this? I mean, you've pretty much already said it. I mean, having one place to go that has all the tools that you would look for, or at least this is the beginning. Our intent is so that it does have all the tools, and it'll be constantly being improved upon. I mean, this is going to be a continuous project. This is not this is not a finished product by any stretch of the magic. Zero, one, three. You know, I mean, we've got a lot more work to do. Again, we want your help. We want your input. We want your tools. So we have a place to put these and make them always available to everybody. And one of the things I do want to say about always and it's free is that um, this is something that we use in our testing. Right? This is not a tool that we built because we thought it'd be a cool idea and we'll put it on a shelf and let other people try it. We're eating our own dog food. Right? We do mobile app assessments. We test the security of mobile applications quite frequently and this is the tool set we're going to run. So for us, it's an imperative for us to continue to fix it, right? Because if it doesn't work on our jobs, we have a problem. So the idea is who would want to use this? And this is where, um, there was some confusion when we first started talking about this, right? Because I'll accept it. We're penetration testers. We are professionally evil, right? We focus on attack. And that is where our life is, right? It makes some interesting conversations when you talk to people. Hey, what did you do today? Oh, I broke into a bank. Um, it was kind of fun and easy, sadly. Sadly, it wasn't my bank. They're bad enough. But who else would want to use it? Because when we started, we were really focusing on testing tools, those penetration testing tools. But the idea here is anybody can use it. You've got your IT admins, the people responsible for the mobile infrastructure, the people responsible for rolling out the devices and the apps and the things like that. You've got your security consultants that want to go in and assess stuff. Yeah, we're biased. We like consultants, right? You've got your forensics analysts. Right? More and more cases, more and more incidents are involving the mobile devices. Because keep in mind, we're not just talking the iPhone or the Android device in your pocket. We're talking about the organizations that are replacing laptops with iPads. 
Now our sales guys don't need a full laptop, let's give them an Android tablet. They can do their presentations, they can have their client information on there, and that's okay. And what we find when we start dealing with this is people are treating them as if they have the security wrapped around their full laptop without considering the fact that they don't. They're different. We also have the idea, it's not up on the slide, but what about developers? Let's actually give this to developers who are building the mobile applications so that they don't use Base64 encryption, as I've heard from so many developers, right? What type of encryption do you use? Rot 26. <laughs> How about you just double Zor encode that for a little extra security, right? So if we gave this to developers, and, and I hate to use the word empower, but if we empower them to test their own shit before we do it, Right? Wouldn't that be better? So let's keep this out there. Let's push it out to all the people. So the design objective. Well, I think we want to first thank Chris Cuevas for posing for that picture, don't we? Yeah, there is that. Yeah, so that, thank you, Chris. Good. That was beautiful, man. It looked good. Yeah. I tried to convince um, Tony to wear this costume on the stage today. You uh, do not pay me was, enough. <laughs> yeah, this is, our only fear was if one of the, the moles uh, popped up too soon. And um, <laughs> we already talked about, didn't we? <laughs> So when we decided to uh, put together the DARPA proposal for this project, we said, all right, what's going to be our design objectives? Because, well, they kind of requested that. And uh, so we said, well, all right, well, let's think about this. We want to something very similar to Samurai or Backtrack, something that you can boot off of a DVD, off of a USB, into a VM, what have you. Uh, we wanted to use, like I said, an operating system that everybody's familiar with. So, hey, you know, obviously Linux, that makes sense. Um, we want to make it free. We want to make it easy so we can distribute it. Um, yeah, free is very, very good. Um, as well as not getting into any kind of issues with licensings or those restrictions. So we try to do everything we can to keep it so that you know that when you use it, psh, hey, you're good from a licensing perspective. Uh, we also want to align it to a testing methodology. Um, there's one, I've heard of one out there, some guy, Kevin Johnson, teaches it a lot. I, I know, anyway, um, so we decided to use a, a, a line the tools so that they're organized and structured in such a way that it fits along with your testing methodology. Um, we also want to make sure that it's not just about doing the, test, the, the pen testing. We want to make it a full environment so that you've got uh, you know, Android emulators, uh, software development kits, uh, tools to do forensics, uh, and so wireless analysis, and we'll see a little bit more of that in a moment. Um, it's not fixed, though. If you want to customize it, hey, that's, that's a great idea. You know, you know, burn it up the way you want. Let's put uh, some added tools or you know, figure it out the way you want. As a matter of fact, the custom customization, customizability, or whatever That's the word it. is, right, um, is actually very nice. It's something that we embedded in Samurai. We continue to use the Remaster Sys project to build the ISOs with the idea that you, as an organization, uh, for example, Burp. How many people here love Burp, right? Woo! Burp! Best tool in the world. How many people here own a license for Burp? Right? Yeah. So what use is having burp free on the MobiSec environment when you've got a paid license? So what you do, you go in there, you replace the free version with your paid version, and you remaster the DVD. And now all of a sudden you've got it customized with the tools you have licenses for. Or we've seen a lot of organizations with other projects where they'll take it and rebrand it for their internal team and reboot burn it. Right? So, what? And sell, yeah, okay, we've seen that one too. Idiots. <laughs> so, I think a lot of people do that. Let me take the work you did and gave for free, and we'll start branding it our way and, and selling it. The one that pisses me off is when they do that, and then they leave my email address for support. <laughs> <laughs> so, jumping back, I was a little tangent away, right? You know, because uh, I'm full of tangents. Also, well, my eyes are brown. Squirrel! And, uh, yeah, squirrel. You know, I was the project lead for BASE for years. I had some jackass write me for BASE. He kept getting an error message. I look at the error message, it says line four. Line four has been a comment since the beginning of the project. You can't error out on a comment. So I wrote him and said, hey, you know, when, did you edit the code? No. Did you edit the code? No. Did you, how about you call me? The guy calls me up. He still talk, starts talking. Turns out, yeah, he edited the code. He rebranded the project as his, then took out, because you know those comments were pretty heavy, uh, he took out all references to copyrights and the GPL, because those were inconvenient comments at the top of the page. When he did that, he fucked up the other code. It wouldn't run, so he called me. So I say to the guy, oh, by the way, he was selling this project. 
I said, let me get this right. You took the work that the base project team built over years. You rebranded it as your own, removing all references to us. You're trying to make money on it. You're too dumb to support it yourself. That doesn't seem real fair, does it? And I said, well, when you say it like that, it sounds really bad. <laughs> Isn't that called outsourcing? Yeah, yeah it's outsourcing, yeah. Uh, I hate people. <laughs> I really do. Sorry, I jumped into your customization. Go ahead. So, one of the things Tony's mentioned, I've mentioned, is constraints and limitations. Now, I want to be very clear here. These are not constraints that Secure Ideas or the DARPA CFT are placing on the project. These are the constraints and limitations inherent in dealing with mobile testing tools. When you go out there and look at the mobile environment, it seems like most of them, including Google, sadly, have not really understood this whole idea of open source, right? Android is open source except for those pieces, right? Phew. Your ride is here. Man, your ride is here. <laughs> so many of these tools you can't distribute. So I can't put the iPhone emulator on this environment, ignoring the fact it only runs on a Mac, right? Stupid. Uh, but, excuse me? Exactly. I mean, we know that, I mean, from a business perspective, it makes perfect sense. You like to design for our phone, buy our computer. But from our perspective, it sucks. So what we've done is we've put in instructions and links to the tools we're not allowed to distribute. So if it's a Linux environment, here's the instructions on how to install that and where you can go get it. Because you know, a lot of times it's as simple as I got to register for an account so they can spam me. If it's a Windows tool, it doesn't, or a Mac tool, it doesn't come for Linux, we've got the link to where you get it and the instructions on how you can install it on your own machine. And we feel bad about that, right? It, it bothers me that we're giving you an environment where we're saying, hey, cool testing tools, oh yeah, that quarter of the tools can't run there. But, you know, Microsoft would be pretty pissed if we put up an ISO of Windows 7, right? Hey, open source, distribute it. Probably not a good idea, make up for it. But, so we do have some constraints like that, right? You have to go out and get those tools. You have to install those yourselves. But in alignment with our idea of let's provide a single place to learn where this stuff is, we give you the links to that. It's not just, a, oh, yeah, by the way, there's other tools we didn't give you. Figure them out, right? Because that would just suck. Um, and sadly, not everything runs on Linux, even under Wine, right? We did. Trying to get some of the Windows tools to run under Wine. If we could just get Windows developers to use Wine in their testing environment, I think that would be out. beautiful. Yeah. So, so we decided let's uh, let's put together a structure where it's a little bit easier to find the tools you're looking for. Um, you know, let's say you're going to do um, uh, pull down some app that you want to run. You don't want to do it on a real device. Throw it in an emulator, and now you want to go ahead and pull some of the data out of it using some of the forensics tools. Uh, then you want to throw it through, let's say, Burp. Um, you can do that with the penetration tools. Uh, let's say you want to decompile. Let's say it's a Java code, and we got that in the reverse engineering. Oh, let's say you want to do some Bluetooth testing. We got support for Uber, Uber tooth, Uber, Uber, Uber tooth. You that, that one too. Yeah, that one too. Um, so basically, we try to categorize these so it's a little bit easier to find what tool you're looking for instead of just hunting around for something. Then we provide this idea, Tony mentioned earlier, of testing around a methodology, right? So we, inside the penetration testing tools, we then further split it up based on the idea of reconnaissance, mapping, discovery, and exploitation. And you can tell that Tony wrote this slide because reconnaissance is spelled correctly. Um, <laughs> I spell reconnaissance so badly that not even Google knows what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> How many other people use Google as a dictionary? It's beautiful, isn't it? It's just great. I, they really need to release an app for that. But, um, so the idea is, you know, map against this. Let's start trying to fix the scattershot testing methodology. And we're not even getting into the people who just run Nessus, rebrand the report. But, um, you know they're out there, right? <laughs> Idiots. So we've got this methodology for you to test against. So we've got a number of uh, tools out there. Like we said, we have the Android uh, software development kit. We've got a number of Android emulators. Now we will say, I guess full disclosure, right? We, <laughs> we did find a problem with uh, the Android emulators. If you're running on a Mac, uh, things beautiful. You decide to run some of the Android emulators onto Windows VM yeah, even if you, even in, in a VM player. 
it doesn't work so nicely. So, it, but it's a known issue. Well, so we'll continue to track that, see if we can get it fixed. By the way, it's a known issue with the Android emulator, not with not with us. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Three o two. Three two. Thank yeah. you, Chris. By the way, you guys, Chris, stand up. This is Chris Quavis. He's also one of the project team members. Uh, he got to talk yesterday. Awesome talk. Piss off bit nine. But he did use PowerShell, but he did not use PowerShell on this, right? So, <coughs> uh, but yeah, the Android 3.2 emulator on Windows VM, with, you know, workstation and player under Windows, slow as hell. And they're trying Takes to forever. That's what she said. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That'll never get old, will it? So we also have some forensics tools on there, right, to go in there and figure out what happened. You can start analyzing things. Uh, take, I always call them drive images, even though they're phones. It's just habit. Uh, you know, to actually image the device and figure things out, start doing those forensics. We also provide a whole series of penetration testing tools. And this is, well, it's our bread and butter. It's what we do. Uh, this is where we focus most of our time. And you'll notice that the majority of these pen testing tools are web focused, right? Why? Mobile apps are web focused. It's actually pretty scary how many of the mobile apps are web applications behind them or web services. And I love the fact that the developers trust that the traffic going to that web application or that web service will be non malicious, right? Because it's coming from their mobile app. They don't think about the fact that, well, we can intercept it, we can step in the middle, we can talk directly to it, and I'm not gruntled, right? I'm the disgruntled employee sitting out there screwing around with their apps. And so we actually start building things like now if we go see me into it, uh, you got, well, Nick Toe, because what the hell, you know? Uh, but Burp, by the way, the screenshot here, this is a fun little project. A group of us got together and we bought uh, $250 worth of the top 100 you have know, the top whatever number, uh, Android, iPhone, and Blackberry apps. Uh, and then also the top 100 free apps on all of those environments. And we ran them all through Burp. And what we realized is, is that the collective IQ of mobile developers is about a negative 27. Because um, you've got some really smart ones out there, but they are absolutely overwhelmed in the average by the rest of the mobile developers. <coughs> You see things like hard-coded usernames in the mobile app. You contact the development team, why is that a hard-coded username? Their answer is, well, that's how we track that it's our mobile app. You do realize that hard-coded username has administrative privileges inside your web application. But yeah, but who would ever notice it? Didn't I just give you the password? Right? Like, I'm some strange weirdo on the phone, and I've got the password. That doesn't worry you? Well, you're telling me about it. Yes, but, 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 you're missing the point, right? Then we had the one team, and I'll, I'll name them SME Storage, right? They actually, Base64 Encrypt, can you tell that's a pet peeve? Uh, they Base64 Encrypt their data, and then they put it as a GET request, unencrypted, so I write them, hey, you're uh, doing this stupid, right? I said it more professional, you know? So they said, okay, they released an update. They were base 64 encoding with assault. <laughs> like, what do you do with that? This is where I go to my idea that security should be painful. Right? If you do something security dumb, I should be allowed to hit you in the back of the head. Right? Wouldn't that make things better? How many people do you know, if you did something stupid and I hit you in the back of the head, you'd stop doing it, right? Because you're a smart man. But I know, I can see it in your face. You're thinking about that guy at work. You could hit him in the head until your hand was bloody and he'd click the link. Right? <laughs> click that link again, I'm kicking you in the nuts. Click. Right? But aren't you working out your frustrations? It's a win-win. So either they're going to stop or you feel better. <laughs> I like the plan. Sadly, nobody's let me implement it. And you know, the other owners of Secure Ideas have told me I'm not allowed to do it at Secure Ideas. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Chris. But, <laughs> so, but the pen testing tools are out there, right? You've got all the environment you need. You set it up. You can build it. We also have some reverse engineering tools. 
So basically, if you want to take that and reverse it, decompile it, figure out what the hell they're doing, what were they thinking? <laughs> you look at some of this code and like, seriously? Now, of course, for legal reasons, you may not be allowed to call it reverse yeah. engineering. You're studying the interior aspects of the application. Very nice. Right. I like that. Nice. Okay. Hey, everybody, everybody write that down. <laughs> when did you get your law degree? I don't know. I made it up on my Facebook profile. <laughs> now, what does Flaw Finder do? It finds flaws. Oh, very good. Very good. So it's nice to have that. Um, Java decompilers, we mentioned, and Stray. So some pretty decent tools here for you. You also have the ability to deal with the wireless side of this, right? Because our mobile devices are wireless, except in power. Wouldn't wireless power be nice? Be able to wander around, just have it charged. I don't know. I like that idea. But you've got all the stuff in there. If you want to use an Uber Tooth One, as every, how many people here don't own an Uber Tooth One? Go now, buy one. We'll wait. Where's yours? <laughs> Which one? I own two. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I'm not lending it. But you've got all these tools out there to see what's going on. You can get network captures. You can start intercepting stuff, looking at the Bluetooth aspect of things. The environment is built for this type of testing, right? Now, of course, we're still waiting for a vendor to make us pull the talk. <laughs> we're waiting. No. So basically, as we said, this runs in pretty much uh, DV, directly off a of DVD, a USB via VM. Um, you see here with some of the settings we've uh, set up, really prefer that you have two processors, especially with the uh, Android emulators. They take a lot of horsepower. Um, also with the memory as well. Um, 15 gig, uh, more if you want to customize it. Uh, USB, obviously, if you want to plug in your phone, that'd be kind of nice to be able to do that. And uh, Wi-Fi analysis, as well as uh, USB for the Uber Tooth. Um, we are going to have this available at the beginning of February. You can see the link there. That is going to be the link, right? That's the link right now. Right now it says okay. coming soon. Okay. Uh, it's really <laughs> exciting. You know, there it's, a, it's a white page with black text. You know. um, this will not be where the download is from, right? We will link to the download from this site. Why? Because I'm a cheap bastard and bandwidth costs money. I'll admit it, right? I'm sorry? <laughs> it was on Mega Upload, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've always tried to figure out if it was okay to uh, find hosting space in vulnerable applications, but... <laughs> it might move around. Right. It's like that whole idea, right? This is something I think, never mind, we won't get into my plans, but... Uh, <laughs> dumb vendors. So, the idea is here, uh, one of the things we want to talk about is this was a DARPA CFT project. You know, the cyber fast track. How many people here have heard about the DARPA CFT? How many people here have submitted to the DARPA CFT? That's way too few hands. I'm serious, guys. This project, this, this uh, cyber fast track, well, uh, good thing talking is not part of my job. But the cyber fast track is absolutely, in my opinion, one of, if not the best thing the government has done. This is one of the few times where we're from the government, we're here to help, actually makes sense, right? <laughs> Which was kind of scary. The, uh, the idea is, as you guys have heard, right? They're gonna start working with small organizations. Secure idea is, we're five guys, right? No, we don't sell burgers. And we can't afford to go after the ridiculous DARPA pro you know, the, the, the big DARPA projects. And even if we could afford to go after them, we couldn't win them. Because, hi, I'd like to get a part of that 800 bajillion dollar project. How many people are you gonna have working on it? My daughters. <laughs> <laughs> Hacker Princess Zero and Hacker Princess One can handle this for you, right? Yeah, Brenna and Sarah, we gotta mention them, right? Brenna and Sarah, hell, Brenna can pick locks faster than I can. That's why she's homeschooled now. <laughs> You know? when the and you think he's kidding. <laughs> <laughs> when the teacher calls you in because your daughter's lying, has a problem with reality, like you're freaking out as a horrible parent because you didn't notice she was lying. Do you want to talk to the teacher and the teacher's talking to you really serious? Well, we challenged her on it and she wouldn't change her story. Finally, my wife and I are sitting there we're freaking out, right? Like, holy shit, I got called in front of the principal. And uh, so I finally say to the teacher, well, what is she lying about? Well, on Monday, we asked the students what they had done this weekend, and Brenna stood up, little monkey face, stood up 
and said, I hacked the website. <laughs> Now learn from my experience. The right answer at that point is, holy shit, why would she make that up? <laughs> the answer I gave, why would you think she was lying about that? <laughs> I found out that it's better for the teacher to think your daughter's a liar than a hacker. <laughs> right? She was five. She was sitting in my lap. I was breaking into some website. I don't know, you know, nuclear missile launches or something. And um, made that up. <laughs> Typed the whole command out. Said Brenna hit enter. She hit enter. She got social security numbers. She did her little root dance, and there is nothing better than a five-year-old's root dance. <laughs> okay. So the CFT project. Told you, tangenting all over the freaking place, right? But uh, the CFT project really was an amazing thing for us because, well, one, you want to talk about social engineering your way into a job. Now what you do, right? Social engineering your way into a job. Call up the company you want to work for. This is what Tony did, by the way. Hey, I understand you want to do one of those DARPA CFT things. How about we do this? I'll donate my time. I'll write the entire proposal. If you get the project, you hire me. Tony now works at Secure Ideas. So, <laughs> right? If you build this proposal really short, like 16 pages, right? I'm not going to try to teach you the whole project stuff, man. But you go out there and you push it out there, and they work with you. They, they understand that you're trying to do some really cool research and that there's interesting things out there, and, and you absolutely need to get in on this, right? And I'm not just saying that because, hey, well, they pay you, right? Wouldn't it be nice to get paid to do the research we throw around for free, you know? But the project works really well. Talk to Mudge. The website out there, uh, cftusma.edu, is, is a place where you can go get more information. And one of the best parts is you get to keep the IP. Yeah. I mean, they're basically funding your research, and then you get to go from there and take it on. You can commercialize it. You can turn around and sell it, which I know is the same thing. But, <laughs> well, actually, no. You can commercialize something and make no sales. But, or you can release it open source, right? Which is what we're looking at doing. And the turnaround time was just ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, the Let's response was fast. Yeah. Um, so, unlike the government. <laughs> so one of the things we're gonna do after this, so what's next? Once we get this finished, well again, we want this to continue. We want this to keep growing. This is just the beginning. And we felt the way to do this is to work with Jack Menino and make this a real OWASP project. Or I'm sorry, be part of the OWASP project, the mobile security project. So that's what we're going to be doing, following right on these steps. Uh, you know, we're going to be geared to pulling uh, developers and other resources because we want this to take off. We don't want to sit and go stale. All right? We want the input. The tools that are out there is really just the beginning. If you look at the pen testing tools, there are a lot of the tools that you already know and see. This is just to whet your appetite. Let's get started. Let's get going. Some of the other tools, yeah, they are very mobile specific, but there's so much opportunity. So we're going to be uh, getting with Jack Menino and kicking this off in February. Yeah, working out the final details. We don't know exactly how that's going to work yet. We're not even sure how you make something in a lost project. I called Jack and said, what do you do? And he goes, call me. I'm like, done. <laughs> right? So we still have to work out the details of how to do that and how to push it out there. Basically, what we want to say is just, you know, thanks. There's a lot of people that put a lot of things in this. First off, you know, you know, Mudge obviously in the CFT, that the only reason that a small security company could afford to dedicate people to build this was because CFT was willing to fund it, right? I, I gotta pay my mortgage. As, as horrible as that is, you know, the idea of liking to be able to just do stuff, um, I like being able to pay my mortgage every month and, and say to Squarehead and Monkey Face that they still have a bedroom, right? Um, Yes, that's what I call them. Um, you know, there's lots of people out there that, are, that have helped. Chris, obviously, who's not up on stage with us. Uh, Sean Murdinger uh, actually did some beta testing for us and gave really good feedback. And this was above and beyond what we expected from somebody who said, hey, can I try it out? Yeah, sure, what the hell? Um, and of course, we want to make sure that people understand the real people we need to thank are the people who built the tools and released them originally. Because Mobisec is not a, oh my gosh, we came up with this really cool thing and built stuff nobody had ever done before. No, all we said was, hey, guess what? We're pulling it together. <laughs> and so we're standing on the shoulders of the people who built this before us. 
right? That's what enables us to do this kind of testing. And, and of course, everybody knows that John Sawyer is the inspiration for every security project. He just doesn't realize it. Even if you don't realize he's your inspiration, right, John? <laughs> so, thanks. That's Mobisec. We can actually show you a, a VM of Mobisec running right now. It's not a real exciting demo. Uh, you get to see the background and the menus. Yeah. While I'm pulling that up, any questions? What's the password for Samurai? What's the password for Samurai? There's a website for that. <laughs> so the password for Samurai is, if you have physical access to the environment and can't get in, you shouldn't be using Samurai. <laughs> I'm just saying, right? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm going deaf because I'm not as old as the retiree over here, but pretty old. Are you guys moving to the new version of LTS when it comes out in April? When uh, the new version of LTS comes out, we'll evaluate how fast we can move to it. Obviously, Ubuntu has this habit of coming up with really weird off-the-wall changes to make. Hey, nobody actually uses uh, the user directory. Um, let's remove it. I made up that change. Please, please don't implement it, Ubuntu. But, <laughs> so we'll have to look at 1204 when that comes out. The plan is to maintain across LTS versions as support drops off, but obviously Ubuntu has done overlap of support capabilities, so it won't be an immediate switch. Make sense? Question. I'm sorry, I heard a question. Yes, they, I'm, I'm going, you're right in front of a spotlight. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I actually mentioned it earlier in passing. No, 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 no. I mentioned it in passing. I should have given it more attention because it really is a great project. It's called Remaster Sys. It's the exact same project we use for Samurai WTF. Uh, Chris and Tony actually uh, were able to use a lot of the, the, oh, wow, I screwed that up with Samurai uh, and not make the same mistakes in Mobisec. Like, they're not going to set the password in a readme on the desktop of Mobisec and then release the ISO. Um, but yeah, we use Remaster Sys. I recommend it highly. Um, I've looked at the one personally, and I don't know about Tony and Chris would probably answer this better than I can. I've looked at the remastering process for Ubuntu, and my brain hurts when I try to think about doing it. So, and Remaster Sys is easy. So. Any other questions? Well, I'm easy. So, basically, this is Mobisec. Yes, sir. Support for USRP and the um, uh, microcell stuff that's been released before? Do we have support for the microcell stuff in the USRP? I don't think it's in there yet, is it? Chris, do you know? Chris, why don't you come up here real quick while we're answering these questions? Yeah, I'm out you on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get out of here before you throw up on me. <laughs> come on, PowerShell boy. That's definitely something we should look into putting in there. I don't know why we missed it. That was my fault. So thank you. Any other? I saw a hand over here. Yes, sir. Are you guys including native binaries for phones themselves? Native binaries for phones themselves. Wow. Like hardware. Um. If there are tools that are available for that, like for example, there are some tools. That I remember the company that made them. I'm blanking, totally. The, well, the question was, are we including native binaries for the phones themselves? Um, there are some tools that are supposed to run natively on the phone. Uh, and I can't believe I'm blanking on the name of that company. I can't remember the name of the tools. And the source code is available in Mobisec with instructions on how to compile it and then push the resulting binary over to the phone. That's the only one that currently I know of that exists on the phone. But I have no problem adding things that make sense. If you want to, send us an Right? Uh, we can create an email called Mobisec. There isn't one yet. <laughs> there probably there will be. be. Yeah, as soon as I can get into an SSH tunnel. <laughs> so, basically Mobisec, right? It's it we want to. There's nothing exciting about this. Right? You've got your menus up at the top. Why am I doing this demo? You don't. I'm in front of a laptop, right? So, and then like we said, we've split up the tools into various menus, and you can go in here and then just go through and see, okay, well here, I wanna run the SDK manager, I wanna go uh, get Xcode IDE. Now when you run into things like this, they're gonna dump down and give you instructions. 
See, I know that's a little hard to read because up on the screen, uh, I can read it fine uh, because I'm right here. Uh, but basically it tells you, right? This is what this is. Is it open source or not, right? How do you go get it? There's the download for it. And here's how you can go get instructions on installing it. So we point to all of that information. And then in this case, why I picked this one, there's actually notes that say, this only runs on a Mac. Right? You can download the DMG all you want and try to make it work on your Windows box. We're sorry, get a real computer. Um, either install Linux or buy a Mac, either way, just get rid of Windows. But, my opinion, you know, children that run Windows, it's awful. So the tool is there like that, or you can just go in and run the other tools that are available to you. So you can come in here, and we'll, you know, um, I'm blanking on where something is that I can just run right here. See, like I said, not very exciting, right? Um, of a demo. And you've got all of the information that you need to then build. Now with Eclipse, obviously, that's a development environment. Excuse me. Yeah, you can build jars with this. You don't actually need a, a custom script to do that. Um, so, that's what we say. Very simple. Any other questions? You like that one, didn't you? Yes, Ryan. What is the Mobisac password? What is the Mobisac password? Just better write this down. We're not telling you. It's Mobisac. Damn, you told them. <laughs> yeah, it's Mobisac. We're real original. You, you log in with the username Mobisac and you type in Mobisac. Now, of course, Tony and Chris were nicer to you than I was with Samurai because, look, even I misspell Samurai. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Yes. You know it's going to bother you. What does the logo represent? Okay, so basically what we did was we went out to this really cool site called Logo Design Guru. And you build a, a proposal. And we basically said, hey, this is what we want. We have this Mobisec project and everything else. And what we came up with was this idea of our world communicating wirelessly with the balance of defense and attack. And we put them together into, well, we didn't want the true yin yang type symbol, so we had them build a new shape. Um, and, okay, all that's bullshit. Basically, we went out to Logo Design Group and said, hey, we need a logo. And we need another Pokemon ball. ball. Yeah, and some guy came up with this, <laughs> right? You have to ask him. There is absolutely no meaning to it. I will tell you that if you ever want to laugh, right, go sign up for a Logo Design Guru account and put out a proposal. Because there are people out there, that they must go on American Idol and sing, right? Because, <laughs> you know, hey, I need a logo for Mobisec. Could you do me a favor? Could you build me a logo? Yes. So they obviously load MS Paint. <laughs> they drew a big M and an S in alternating colors that if I put those on together, my wife would kick my ass, <laughs> right? My wife picks my clothes out for me. We need granules for adults. But, and then they upload it. And you look at it and you go, holy shit, that's what we're gonna get? And then you start getting some good things. I will tell you that with a logo design guru, and I'm not trying to pimp their system, but we've used it in a number of metrics where the secure ideas logo came from, right? Um, uh, when you do it, don't say things like, we don't want a lock. Because what will happen is, what they read is, we want a lock. And all of the submissions you get will have a lock on it, right? And, and what happens is you start interacting with them and say, hey, I like that font, I like this color, things like that. And this was the one we chose. What did we run it for, 10 days? Yeah, and we got 250 time. some submissions. I mean, it was really good. And some of them were amazingly good. Some of them were amazing crap. But um, that's what we picked. So My there's no meaning. If you'd like, uh, come up with a story behind it. Uh, we'll publish it on the website, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, we probably have a contest like that, right? What the hell does the logo mean? <laughs> but at least we didn't do like Bank of America and put the stripes in the wrong order, right? The, the, what is that, right? Shouldn't those stripes go up with the ones that are red? Whatever. But any other questions that I don't have to make up an answer to?
<laughs> yes, sir. I'm, I'm sorry. I, like I said, I'm deaf. Does DARPA publish the proposals? Does DARPA publish the proposals? I apologize. I've got no idea. Uh, I believe that they probably publish. I know they publish details about the proposals and projects that are open. I don't know if they submit, they publish the full proposal. That I don't know. It would make sense, right? It's a really cool idea. Let's get it out there. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. So I make up an answer again. I think he did say that it was, but I can't. You, you think that Mudge did say they are published? Because it's the way it's funded that they do it without the public see because. And that makes sense, right? So, so the answer from the front row who isn't making it up. Uh, he thinks much said yes, that they do publish it based on the funding, right? But you're not 100% sure, and I've got no idea. Do you guys know? Is it published? I don't think they publish it. I think it's if you ask for it, they'll shoot it to you. Um, and I think there are some restrictions as to what you can share when you're doing a DARPA project, but there's very limited. But if they just want to know about it, pretty simple. I'm sorry? The performer is allowed to release it? How do I know you know? The performer is allowed to release it. Okay. Yeah, I, if I'm allowed to, uh, as the, the owner of the company, I'm going to say that if I'm allowed to release my proposal, I have no problem sharing it. I'd have to find out from DARPA if I'm allowed to release it. So if somebody wanted to see, here was a successful proposal, it might have just been because they fell for it. But um, like as, as long as I'm allowed to, I have no problem sharing that. Anything else? Then in that case, hey, thank you very much for coming out. We hope you have a good time.